we continue to take a look at the candidates running for office and joining us in studio, State Representative John Frulo, uh, seeking re-election in HD84. Welcome back to the show. Good morning, Chad, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, how's the how's the campaign trail been going? Well, it's busy. Just a lot of things going on, a lot of block walking, a lot of meeting with people, and then, of course, still doing the job itself. Uh, you know, we, we can't forget that I still have a job to do, chairman of insurance. That takes a, a lot of time. We've got a lot of, uh, you know, Lubbock, or you know, the state of Texas actually is the 10th largest insurance market in the world, and, uh, of course, that's uh, under the, the auspice of the the committee or the, you know, the activities are there. So it, uh, you know, there's always a lot of activity going on. It's, it's a, it's a pretty powerful committee uh, down in Austin. And I've had questions from some listeners out there going, okay, unless I'm in the insurance business, uh, how does that affect me? Okay, I'll tell you. This last weekend, I was block walking. I, I came up to a, a, a realtor that I knew, and he was sitting outside of a house. And the, I looked at it, and the front door was off, the garage door was off, and the whole place was burnt inside. What happened was a lady that uh, was a retired uh, person uh, was uh, letting, uh, I believe, a, a relative live in the house, and they started a fire. Well, she thought the insurance was too expensive. Uh, had insurance on this house for a number of years, discontinued it, and is now left, uh, actually sold a house for just pennies on the dollar because, mm-hmm. you know, at an age where you can't do that. So insurance uh, affects us all. We all buy insurance. We have homeowners. If we don't have a home, we have a, a, a rental policy, most likely in an apartment that we live in. Most apartments require that. If we drive a car, you better have a car insurance. <laughs> you know, we check for that at the state. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion when I was on state affairs, how that works how to get that uh you know so insurance is it, it uh we, we see obamacare the thing i'm fighting on the insurance committee is obamacare it doesn't work it can't work it's not going to work it's going to collapse under its own weight so we have to watch that and make sure that people are you know that uh, are, are taken care of that we take care of the states so there's a lot of uh you know insurance touches all of us whether or not you write a check out to that insurance company every month it it impacts you and you're right it is a huge committee it's a, a nine person standing committee and um, you know of course uh, chairman smithy out of amarillo had been uh, chairman for 22 years i believe on that uh, committee and and so it was a uh, really uh you know, uh, uh, a neat opportunity for me and for Lubbock to be put as chairman of the insurance committee in just my third session. It shows the, the leadership qualities I have that, uh, you know, we're, we've got more say. We've got a lot of clout. You know, of course, Chairman Perry over in the Senate. Uh, you know, this this area is uh, really, uh, you know, got a lot of power to have two chairmen, one in the House, one in the Senate. Uh, you know, we basically have three reps out here, you know, three positions there. So that's there's a lot of communities that would love to have that uh, situation that Lubbock is in. We're visiting with State Representative John Frulo. Uh, let, let's get into the topic of immigration because that has been uh, a big discussion point in this race uh, for HD84. And we just had a drive by caller uh, who wanted to know why you voted with the Democrats in funding seven new aircraft for DPS. And I think this ties in with the, the discussion on this diversity fund that was out there. If if, and I think that's where the caller was going. This diversity fund that was out there, uh, $800 million in border security already. How, how, how is all this tied in together? What, what, what happens there in, in that uh, that whole amendment, of course, it gets back to the Tony Dale Amendment. Right. Uh, you know, as we've uh, seen, when, when that bill was on that, or that, that amendment was on the House floor, Um, And what happens in the appropriations process is we have what we call a put-and-take rule. So if you take something out of one area uh, or if you want to put something in another area, you got to do the offset in another area of the budget. So Tony came up with an amendment that was going to uh, purchase in that first year – and he had talked to somebody in the department. Now, he didn't talk to Colonel McCraw, who was head of the department in DPS. And as you heard uh, uh, yesterday with uh, Chairman and Speaker Pro Tem, Dennis Bonin, he, he, he who uh, had this, uh, the bill, HB 11, which was the border security bill, working hand-in-hand with Colonel McCraw, who is down there. He's living it. Uh, they looked at what all was going on. 
uh, as Dennis said yesterday, he, he talked to the colonel. As soon as he saw that amendment, he called him up and he said, uh, you know, uh, Colonel, what, what, what's going on here? I thought we had given you everything you wanted, everything you needed, and I see this amendment. He, and the colonel said at that point, you know, according to Dennis, that's not something we asked for. That's not something that uh, uh, was one of our priorities. And, and so what it included was, um, you're right, seven airplanes. There was two Platus PC-12s. That's a uh, turboprop. Uh, there is a uh, there were three Cessna caravans, which is another turboprop, and then there were two helicopters and support personnel. So in that uh, amendment, it was roughly about seventy six million dollars in that first year. Mm-hmm. And now going forward, you don't you know those airplanes last more than one year, and I know that the airplane I fly right now is a nineteen seventy four airplane. So you can keep them more than one year. You don't have to buy those airplanes and helicopters the next year. The state already has uh, twenty three airplanes. So what what the you know the colonel said that's not a priority. That's not what we want. That forty six million dollars was in that first year the next year it'd be roughly somewhere over four million dollars well what has happened is a group came out and said well he voted for the uh, center for disproportionality and disparity over border control well the problem with that is there was only two million dollars in that budget item for that center for disproportionality and disparity it was a law that was put in place i believe uh uh, uh maybe in the 78th legislative session that said that this is what needed to be done. So, you know, first off, we're, uh, to do that, we were complying with the law, but it's not what the colonel wanted. He wanted his 250 people. He wanted his 50-hour work weeks. And then what they also had done uh, and what the colonel had done is he'd actually transferred another airplane, a high-flying airplane, into that, and they moved, I believe, another uh, helicopter into that group. So th- those needs were being taken care of, and he, he didn't even want that. He didn't need that. It wasn't his priority, but somebody decided they wanted to make it. Tony Dale says now that he wishes he uh, hadn't brought that amendment up because it just, you know, it didn't work out. It did it wasn't planned out. Mm-hmm. But that's the kind of stuff that happens on the budget. So the colonel is, uh, you know, very happy with it, uh, spends a lot of time down there, talks to the people. You know, you, here's a, a, a comment from the South Texans Property Rights Association and their executive uh, director, said that South Texas landowners greatly appreciate the state's legislative measures that have made great strides on helping secure the border. The Texas House of Representatives did an extraordinary job ensuring the success of HB 11, the one we talked about earlier, border security, that gave Texas Department of Public Safety the tools they were needed to help stem the tide of criminal activity along the south border. We say, keep up the good work. So that's people right there living. They're not taking a trip down there to see what it's looking like. They're not up there flying around in an aircraft or, uh, you know, they're right there on the ground. They have their property there where people are coming across, doing bad things on their property. Uh, some of these owners are afraid to even go out in their, their yards. We're making that difference. We're doing it. The colonel's doing it. He's got the extra people down there. Uh, the colonel Colonel testified that last week how he was so he was very happy with uh, what Governor Abbott and the legislature did. They gave him we gave him the tools he needed. So this wasn't a uh, you know just a guess at the amount. When I got into the legislature uh, in 2011, that first year our uh, border security budget was about 222 million dollars. The next year, it more than doubled. It went the next session, you know, biennium, two years later, it went up to $467 million. I mean, so we're, we're keeping an eye on it. We're doing a job at the state level that the federal government is not doing. Unfortunately, us as Texas citizens are paying twice, once to the federal government to do their job that they're not doing, and then once where we're putting that money into this uh, border security. And as the colonel said, he said, Texas is putting money into this and it you know could be used in other places or as i always say stay with the taxpayers but that's something we don't have the choice we've got to do it we have to protect our property and our people this last session we did 800 million dollars so 222 to 467 to 800 million dollars you know we're investing in that border we're securing the border and we are on it we have people working on that all time all the time there are meetings going on discussions Uh, i've been down to the border several times it's you know it's important Visiting with State Representative John Frulo about his re-election campaign. When we come back, we have uh, many other things to get into. Here on the Chad Hasty Show, KFYO, visiting with State Representative John Frulo. 
Back on the Chad Eastie Show, News Talk 790 KFYO. Visiting with State Representative John Frulo here in studio seeking re-election for HD84. Uh, you know, those who live in HD84, they, they've received all kinds of mailers and, and, and letters and everything else. And this one came out uh, this week, uh, you know, uh, from a uh, from an organization. Uh, and it goes back to the, the ethics uh, bill. And this is something that I think your opponent has brought up numerous times. Uh, about the uh, uh, about the, uh, the the ethics situation, I want to read from you this this letter that was sent out uh, in recent uh, in a in in a recent interview on his uh, first year as governor. Greg Abbott unloaded on legislators who killed his ethics reform agenda, calling their obstruction reprehensible and shameful. Uh, then the uh, letter goes on to blame you and other uh, House lawmakers for getting in the way of ethics reform. Yeah, that's not the governor blaming me. That's the folks that wrote this letter. Right, okay. right. Well, they're a tri- but they are attributing it to the governor trying to blame you all. So how do you respond to that? Well, well, first off, we can see how the same group attributed buying $46 million worth of aircraft uh, out of a $2 million budget. If we could figure out how to do that, it would take us about 10 minutes to go fix that uh, federal deficit of $19 trillion. So one thing, you know, that gives you a little insight there. But uh, first off, you know, the the ethics bill, and we're all for ethics. We want ethics. And we've talked about that uh, on this program in the past. The bill that came over from the Senate had items in there that said you can't be in the banking industry and receive money. Well, if you work for a bank, if you're on a bank board, uh, you know, that just doesn't make sense. And it was geared towards one person. They had uh, other items in there that were just the, the bill drastically changed from when it was in committee to when it went on the Senate floor when it came over. Uh, one of the biggest things I think it was missing was the dark money. You know, people want to know where that money's coming from. We, we hear people, you know, today talking about how in the congressional race that one candidate has money that's being funded from a source and everybody wants to figure out where that money's coming from and they're getting frustrated that they can't see who is supporting it. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that as as we look at that and we look at... uh yeah, you know, the information that's being put out, people want to know what is happening there. They want that transparency. They want to know where is that money coming from. And I think that, uh, you know, Justice Scalia has talked about that in, in the past on, uh, you know, that we, we need to have that information out there, that it's important. The, the Supreme Court has uh, voted in the past eight to one in in favor of letting the information out. We're not wanting anything to suppress the information. We're just simply saying, tell us who is behind this. Uh, the last time I was on the program, I mentioned if Mother Teresa is, and her organization is behind it, that's going to influence you one way versus Adolf Hitler and his organization behind it. You're going to say, what, what's going on here? What are these people looking for? And, And I think that's important. That's all we're saying. We're not saying don't say what you want. And we're not saying don't say it as often as you want and as loud as you want. We're saying go ahead and do that. But we're saying just tell us who you are and where you're getting your money from. Uh, You know, Justice uh, Scalia said uh, requiring people to stand up in public for their political acts fosters civic courage without which democracy is doomed. And I, I think that's important. When we get away from things like that, we're getting away from the home of the brave. You know, and we can't cover that stuff up. We need to let that know. So, you know, I think that ethics, uh, some of that stuff went on out of that ethics bill, went back to the Senate, and then it got changed over there and, uh, on different parts of the bill. It was cut up and then shipped over, and there were some ethics items that did pass last session. What What is – did you ever hear anything from the governor uh, about how this past session went in his, his opinion? Yeah, actually, the governor sent me a very nice letter and uh, said, you know, in essence, thanks for the conservative session. He came came out and said this was the most conservative session we've ever had in Texas. So, I mean, he was proud of the, 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 the results that we had, and people are proud of the results, not only the people that live here in Texas, but people that live around here. Every day we have anywhere from 850 to 1,200 people that move here. They, they come to Texas.
Texas for the opportunities, the, the, the chance to succeed, the jobs. And so people are moving here. They're voting by moving from wherever they live. They're bringing their companies here. They like our regulatory environment. I mean, heck, last session we d- decreased franchise taxes by 25 percent, and I, I'm on my way to getting rid of that. I want to get rid of that thing. I don't like the franchise tax. Uh, the accountant in me, the old CPA days say, you know, this is not what we need. This tax is not a good tax. It, it's a terrible tax. You can sell a lot of stuff, lose money, and based on that tax, still have to pay a tax. And that's not what we need to do. We need to uh, make sure that we encourage businesses so they can go out and buy more equipment, hire people. You know, we balance our budget in Texas. We've done that every time, every year that I've been in there. This last session, we balanced the budget. We left $3 billion, $3 billion unspent. We had $4 billion in tax refunds, reductions with the homestead exemption. 10000 for each homeowner uh, was the increase in the exemption. And then we also have a rainy day fund with over $10 billion in it. So we're doing a good job. Best gun rights we've ever had. You know, you look at what we've done to Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, and the, the terrible things that they've done. It, you know, we're doing the right things here. What, what are some things that you've been able to do? to help out on the city level or on the county level, whether it be saving money through different items uh, or, or I guess, paving a, a, a leadership role for the city? Well, I think last time one of the best examples of uh, last session was a, a, a situation where Kelly Rose, Sheriff Rowe, called me up and said, John, we, we've got this event, or there's a bill coming up from a, a, a Democrat in Dallas and he wants to make face-to-face visitation in the jails. Well, we have our inmates uh, here at the uh, facility that we just spent uh, roughly about six years ago, $100 million, I think the biggest project we've ever done in the county. And that that was set up on a pod system where you use video visitation. Mm-hmm. Well, what... Uh, uh, that this bill would have done was made it to where we would have to retrofit our new building, and, and that cost was anywhere from thirteen to fifteen million dollars to retrofit the building to where they could actually get face to face. Now, when you have visitation that's face to face, you have to pull the visit the inmate to a, a central area where they can see through a big thick glass the person that they're visiting. Well, when that time is up, they don't want to leave; they want to keep visiting, and so you start getting into fights between the inmates and the guards and it just doesn't work and so we eliminated that that was roughly about four million dollars a year in additional personnel costs and that's on a 24 million dollar budget and it looks like we're running out of time. That's here. right. Tell folks real quick why they need to vote for you. Well, first, go, go to johnfrulo.com, J-O-H-N-F-R-U-L-L-O.com, and you'll see a lot of the information there. I think the job I've done, the things I've been able to accomplish working with Texas Tech, and they're shutting me off. <laughs> Representative Frulo, thank you. Thank you.